You might remember from discussions about nucleophilic substitution that under some conditions an alkyl halide will ionize. The halide simply leaves. As the reaction takes place, the leaving group leaves with a pair of electrons. This makes a carbocation. Now in nucleophilic substitution, we then talked about a nucleophile adding to that carbocation. But look at this. If the adjacent carbon has a hydrogen attached to it, and we have a base present, that base can form a bond with that proton, removing it, so this pair of electrons can form a double bond with the carbon. This happens because the carbocation is electron deficient. It needs a pair of electrons. The base is looking for a proton, and the carbocation needs to give one up. This makes a carbon-carbon double bond, an alkene. As I've mentioned, this leaving group often is a halide, chloride, bromide, or iodide. This transformation is known as 1-2 elimination. Something leaves from one carbon and a second carbon adjacent to each other. There are two steps, and like you would guess, the ionization step is slow, so it's rate determining, and the second step is much faster because there's only one reactant in the rate determining step, that slow first step. It's called an E1 reaction, elimination first order. So this is like SN1, isn't it? And in fact, they can start from the very same compound, an alkyl halide, where the leaving group departs. It's also possible to see this reaction happen with alcohols. Protonation of the hydroxyl group of an alcohol makes a very good leaving group, and then the elimination reaction happens. It's called dehydration, and the leaving group is water. Now I'd like you to take a look at the second step with me for a minute. The reason that base can abstract that proton is that there's a positive charge on the carbon atom next to it. Keeping in mind that second step, the loss of a proton, because there's a positive charge next to the carbon, take a look at this alkyl halide. The bond between the halide and the carbon is polarized, shifting electron density toward the halide. This makes a partial negative charge on the halide, but importantly for what I'm talking about, it puts a partial positive charge on the carbon. In other words, it's already a partial carbocation. And my point is, it shouldn't be a big shock to learn that a base will take a proton off on the carbon next to the carbon that has a halide bonded to it. And loss of the proton, together with loss of the halide, occurs to make an alkene. This happens all in one step. There's only one step. It's the rate determining step. And there are two reactants in that step the alkyl halide, and the base. So this 1-2 elimination is termed an E2 mechanism because there are two reactants in the rate determining step. It's like an SN2 reaction, isn't it? Single step, two reactants. All bond making and bond breaking happens simultaneously. This must be a strong base. And X is usually halide, chloride, bromide, or iodide. Now there are a couple of other things to think about. One is regioselectivity. selectivity. You know that means position selectivity. Often there's an alpha hydrogen on more than one carbon. I've marked the halide carbon in blue. And we can see two different products, couldn't we, from this reaction? So this brings up the question, is the reaction selective for one or the other? Usually the reaction forms more of one than the other. And then there's the question about stereochemistry. In many cases, because A, B, C, and D aren't the same things, both E and Z stereoisomers can be formed. So then we have two questions. Is the reaction stereoselective? And is the reaction stereospecific? In most cases, the reaction will favor formation of one of these stereoisomers over the other. And the answer to the second question is, sometimes. When we learn more about the E2 reaction mechanism, you'll understand why that reaction is stereospecific. So you see, there are several things to learn about the elimination reaction. The regioselectivity, the stereochemistry, the details of the reaction mechanisms of cells, E1 and E2. We'll talk about the effects of which base is used, because it can make quite a difference the effects of which leaving group is used. It doesn't make a lot of difference. The effects of which solvent is used. That can make a difference.
We'll talk about the energetics using energy diagrams, both the kinetics, how fast these reactions are, and the thermodynamics. And finally, these elimination reactions are typical of both alkyl halides and alcohols. We'll see how they're similar and how they're different. I'll cover all of these things in other videos.